I've never found anything. I just have a gut feeling. What should I do? Get the proof. You can't say anything to him until you get the proof. Uh, no. Yes. Probably better. So I'm not wearing makeup. Cover me in sunshine. Hello, lovelies. Hello, lovelies. Uh, so guys, if you have any questions, just pop them in the chat. If I if I can answer them, I will. If I need to point you to a book because what you're asking for is a process, I'll say so. If I if I think you need coaching because it's too individualistic and I need to get into your story and unpack the behaviors that are going on, in order to actually in order to actually give you good advice, I'll say so. Uh, how do you become a better person when you were the reason the relationship ended? It's all in your behaviors. Um, so something that you can do, if you felt that your relationship ended because you didn't know how to relationship properly, like how to be the right person in the relationship, you can always grab Fix That Shit. This is the book that teaches you how to be functional inside a relationship. If you start doing what's in there now, if you start opening your mind up to what should be shifted and how you need to approach things, you will be that much further ahead when you do start a relationship. What should I do if my partner doesn't show as much affection as I do? That's the partner you chose, right? Like, um, you can get a pet, you can, you, you know, expand your love language to get filled by other sources like friends and family, but you chose a partner who's lower on physical affection than you. So um, now that I know about love languages and physical affection and, and people, you know, uh, appreciating it higher or lower than other people, I would never get into another relationship again without doing a love language quiz and seeing where physical affection is on their score. Because now that I have somebody who matches my level of physical affection and I know how amazing that is, I will never go back. I just will never go back to wanting more affection than my partner is willing to give. It's, it's so much nicer to be matched on that. So, you know, this is the partner that you chose. So when we get into a relationship, we have to accept the differences because like I said, you don't get into a relationship to say, okay, now that I'm here, you got to change. Uh, you can do a love language quiz with them at the same time and exchange your results so that each of you can see exactly where physical affection is on each other's love language. And then you can have a conversation about meeting each other halfway. That is something that you can do, but I also want you to open your mind up to saying, it's okay for me to get physical affection from other people and for that to help fill my love bank. Like I do with you guys, you guys, you know, do my words of affirmation for me. Do you ever not want to meditate? Like it just feels like a chore. Um, huh. Sometimes it just, it feels like I wish I had more minutes in a day. Like, um, it's like, oh, busy, busy, busy. Okay, get some meditation. Okay, busy, busy, busy. So, but I, I love meditation. It's so, so soothing. I was thinking of you earlier, hoping you got on live. Here I am, my love. Do you have any advice for being more consistent with meditating? I find it so hard to keep at it. Yes, uh, you wanna drop a chart, a meditation chart. So seven boxes across, eight boxes down, make it eight weeks. Put this where it's gonna stare you in the face, on your fridge, on your bedroom wall, like by your light switch, where you're going to look at it every single day. Every day that you meditate, put the numbers, uh, the number of minutes that you meditated in the box. Um, and every day that you don't, you're going to put an X in the box. And if you get three X's in a row, it really motivates you to catch up on your time. And then at the end of seven days, you're going to count up your minutes. And if it doesn't hit 140, try harder the next week. Big session is amazing. Ah, you're super sweet. Who's you? Uh, my... Boyfriend said he wants to go to the beach with his friends to look at girls. Is that a red flag? It was a joke. Um, and possibly he said it because he knew you'd freak out. Uh, do you think you can stagnate with meditation? 
I think you can kind of plateau. Like initially it feels like you do change a lot because it's so evident when you when you change your brain structure and then it feels like you just kind of like and, and then you can you might have like some massive insights some massive things that happen and then you kind of settle into it um, and that settling is settling in is the effect of your brain staying in an alpha state longer between meditations. Hello lovelies, hello, hello. Who wants a notification when I go live? Say I do. You look amazing, thank you. I'm feeling 80s, are you, are you guys picking up the 80s vibe I'm in right now? Uh, was previously in a nine year relationship since 14, we split, I got in a new relationship. Oh. Loves, don't give me puzzle pieces, everything you write me has to be in one box. I can't stitch together messages. What do I do if my significant other throws my childhood trauma in my face and she makes fun of me for it? Don't be with somebody like that. That's so toxic and mean. Um, so toxic and mean. No, 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 no. Hello, lovelies. Hello, hello. Is physical, yeah, physical touch and words of affirmation are my love languages. <clears throat> do I think meditation would help with alcohol abuse? I actually do. Um, part of the reason why we abuse alcohol is to help deal with anxiety and lower feelings of anxiety. I was abusing alcohol when I started meditating and then it, it took away that need, you know, like I was getting up every day, filling a glass of wine and starting the day off with a glass of wine. Um, and, and it, it took that knee, like I started waking up and feeling like, ah, oh, you know, I'm not getting, I don't need that wine. And the thing is I'm very hedonistic, right? Like when I wanted it, I did it. There was no reason to not want it. When I wanted it, I didn't fight it. I just did it. Um, and then I started meditating and I started not wanting it. So I do think meditation can help with that. Uh, going to my partner's family, what should I do to prepare? ask your partner what you should do or bring because um it's it's too easy to offend people right like you might bring food and they're like what you think we're poor right you might not bring food and they're like what you're not part of the family you don't contribute so ask your partner what you should do and that way you'll get it right What should you look for in a first date? A first date, date is a vibe check. Like, do I want to see that person again? Not, is this a person I'm gonna marry? Is this, is this the future father of my children? It's, do I like them enough to see them again? Because there's still a lot to learn after a first date. You're not gonna learn all that much. Um, so there's two things, is do I like their energy? Do I like how they are? And the other thing is, do we share the same fundamental values? And by the way, always have that no kissing for three months dating rule conversation before they move in for a kiss. So if you think this is a first kisser kind of person, make sure you also bring in the third subject, which is the no kissing for three months dating rule. But you do need to bring up fundamental values because you don't want to fall for somebody who does not share your fundamental values. So fundamental values are getting married and having kids, like the things that your partner needs to be on the same page with you about. Otherwise, you will be miserable. You need to talk about those things on a first date. Oh, are you going to scare them off? Who are you going to scare off? The people who don't share your fundamental values? Jeez, doesn't that sound like a good idea so you don't waste time? So make sure you bring up those fundamental values. Hey, I just want to let you know I'm done my playtime really looking for a committed long-term relationship because I want to get married one day. What about you? And you just, you do it like that. You own it and then you throw it back. What about you? Uh, and boyfriend is a constant liar and now he's asking for trust. Do I trust him? The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. You tell me. Love your look today, thank you.
If you want to stop arguing with your boyfriend over the past, um, get fix that shit because it does teach you how to be present in the moment and how to let go of resentment. Or you can come get coaching with me. I think there's a thunderstorm coming because Maggie is sitting beside me and she's panting and making me, she's just looking, looking, looking for reassurance. Oh yeah, no, it does. It says at midnight it's going to be some thunderstorms and I thought I could hear some rumblings. Hello, Miss Honey. Beautiful Honey. What about guys who are friends with exes? Uh, so I do journal. I do, I do quite a bit of writing and then if I go back and read my writing it makes zero sense to me but it did help me sort out my thoughts um so I was friends with my ex-husband after we divorced because by the time we got a divorce by the time we broke up we had a platonic relationship and that does happen sometimes you break up not because you don't like each other or because you fought too much and like oh I wish it could work but it's just not right it was just like <clears throat> we're, we're just friends we shouldn't be married. We're just friends. Um, and, and so in those kinds of circumstances where there's not, you know, this like desire to still be with the person, um, where there isn't still any kind of sexual chemistry, if it's purely platonic, it's totally fine. Lovelies. Uh, those of you who want a notification when I go live, because I do this like every day, uh, sometimes more than once a day. Um, sometimes I skip any of that's really rare because I know a lot of you guys really count on this. Um, click my picture here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. And when you do that, see, I just did. I just finished reading Fix That Shit. I considered reading it a second time. It is my favorite. I like to try to stay friends with my wife who is leaving me, but I do still love her. Like, don't, right? If, if you're still yearning for her, don't do it. It's not good for either of you. Uh, what does it mean if I keep having, if I keep ha okay. What does it mean if I keep having to fight the urge to bring up old events from the past with my boyfriend? It means you are having an overabundance of stress, fear, and anxiety, and you are looking for a lightning rod to release the pressure. In other words, you're looking for a reason to vomit. So deal with your stress, fear, and anxiety. Reduce your capacity to feel that by meditating. There's a free meditation guide button in the link to my bio. This is actually a starter page to get you into meditation. Read that page, follow the instructions on that page, get started with meditation, shrink your amygdala, which is where stress, fear, and anxiety comes from. That will reduce your capacity for those emotions, which will reduce the overabundance of those emotions that you feel, which will reduce your impulse to turn your partner into a lightning rod to release the pressure of the overabundance of those emotions. Maggie, sit. Down. Maggie, go around. Go. Go around. Come here. Come this way. Maggie, come. She's, she's, come here. Come here. Okay, sit. Maggie, sit. All right, she's just going to stand there. Uh, is there an ideal time of day for meditation? Anytime you want to. Anytime you want to. Uh, you pick your sweet spot. Where did you get your dogs from? Maggie was free to a good home. Um, I was her third owner. Her first two couldn't handle her. Uh, Charlie did come from a Mennonite farm up the road. They breed uh, Westies and uh, Poodles. I guess, I guess her toy poodles he's small he's like about 10 pounds um all of my all of my pets have been rescues up to that point charlie was actually the first pet that uh, i ever went and got from a breeder um my little lulu was passing away and i didn't want to wait to get a friend for maggie um this was at like when covid was hitting too uh and the dogs that were up for adoption were 
the first to go is really hard to find a dog up for adoption, especially one that didn't shed. Uh, do you think meditation can help with weight loss? I do. Yeah. Thank you. I actually do. Uh, tips on starting the conversation of being exclusive. It starts before you kiss. Um, it starts with using a no kissing for three months dating rule and then seeing who waits, like who, who actually sticks around and gets to know you and choosing the best one for yourself with an understanding that this journey gets sealed with a kiss that begins a committed long-term relationship. If you just start something with somebody, um, basically kissing to see where it goes, we're gonna kiss and I'm gonna get to know you while I'm kissing and having sex, which means I'm really not gonna get to know you that well because we're gonna be occupied, you know, with the kissing and having sex, so we're not gonna do that much talking. Um, but at some point I'm gonna want us to be exclusive to each other, so then I'm gonna ask you what we are which means I'm disempowered because you get to decide how my life goes. Um, so do you see how like this process is like you're disempowered, you're disempowered. And, and it's always like up to him how things go. And what I really want you to do is instead of kissing a stranger and hoping that they're who you need, really finding out who someone is with the understanding that you're choosing the best person to start a relationship with because you know what you want and need. And this person is a fit for you. <clears throat> what do you think about creating an Amazon wish list or Pinterest board with a boyfriend to improve gift giving? If the two of you are fine with that, absolutely. But uh, have a conversation with your partner about how they feel about giving gifts. Don't just go to them and go, by the way, these are the gifts that I want. I created a wish list for you go crazy and get me that stuff um because some people really don't like giving gifts some people don't like you know the birthdays or the christmas um they prefer to be more functional and efficient with their gift giving like i'd rather keep your car clean and running well um and gassed up than go buy you earrings like because the earrings feel forced and it's not from a genuine place whereas these acts of service that I do that cost me time and money and if it, if, it, if it wasn't the time doing it it was the time making the money to pay for it to be done you know for them that is a gift on their part so have a conversation about how they feel about gifts and before springing like hey here's what you can buy me on them What are some things me and my husband like to do together? Uh, we love to cuddle, love to cuddle in front of the TV. On Sunday, like we'll watch, um, his, this is his choice by the way. He's, when he's home, the remote's in his hand. Um, so Sunday mornings we watch like Corner Gas and then um, Rust Valley Restores and Backcountry Truckers. <laughs> so, so we lounge around on Sunday, we watch that and um, we hop on the motorcycle when the weather's nice and ride around for an hour or so. So, uh, and we'll go out to eat, like if the restaurants are open, we will go out to eat uh, every three weeks or so. When, when the diner was open, we go and have breakfast every Sunday. I've been sharing your dating advice with my friends, but she says to kiss is how she feels chemistry. So she actually, um, sure she'll feel chemistry a lot of artificial chemistry she's going to create a chemical that's an aphrodisiac an amphetamine and an antidepressant so she's just chasing a chemical high she doesn't really care who the person is and she doesn't really care if they know who she is i have doubts about my relationship every day multiple times a day is that bad come get a coaching session if you want to gain some clarity on that how do you get over impulsive behavior and not obsess so much over someone you love so you distract yourself, right? Like what you're doing, what you are describing is codependency. You are making your partner your purpose. Let me read this again, just so that we're clear on what this is. Um, how do you get over impulsive behavior and not obsess so much over someone you love? So how do I stop being codependent? How do I stop making my partner my purpose? Right, because all your focus is on them. This is exactly what I'm talking about when I say your partner, your purpose. 
you need to not make your partner your purpose. What's happening is you have a drive to execute a purpose. We all do. We frustrate ourselves when that drive is not being exercised in a functional way. Um, and so what you need to do is understand what your purpose is and understand how to be healthy within a relationship. That's two books. Um, so Fix That Shit and Custom Made are the two books that help you achieve that. So Fix That Shit is going to teach you how to calm your emotions, manage your behaviors, and be more functional inside of a relationship, practicing calming self-love, super important. And then Custom Made is gonna answer two questions. What is my purpose? So now instead of making your partner your purpose, you make your purpose your purpose. And the second question is, how do I monetize it? So you take that purpose and you turn it into getting paid, doing what you love. So these two together are going to help you stop obsessing so much over your partner and get you focusing on what is truly going to fulfill your life because your purpose is your cake. Your partner is the icing on your cake. Your purpose is what should be consuming you and then your partner is that person that you share your stories and successes with. Feeling disempowered and feeling the need to ask, how do we ask uh, if we are exclusive after three months? It starts before that. It starts when you first meet them. <clears throat> Guys, you gotta read No More Assholes. You gotta understand how to date effectively. When you meet them, you say, hey, I'm done my playtime. I'm looking for a committed long-term relationship because I want to get married. I want to have a kid one day. I'm using a no kissing for three months dating rule to find that person. If at the end of three months, we still want to kiss, we'll have our first kiss and start a committed long-term relationship. There's no, what are we conversation? You laid it out. You're not kissing just anybody and hoping for the best. You're choosing somebody to start a committed long-term relationship with. If you want to be up for the running, stick around and let's get to know each other. If you don't care to get to know me, take a hike because the space here is not going to be occupied by somebody who doesn't care to get to know me. Is there any circumstance in which cheating could be forgiven? That's up to you to decide, my love. But a serial cheater should be kicked out. Ah, thank you, Barbie. Yes, that's a pretty cute heart. Thank you. Does baby mama have priority uh, of me, the current girlfriend? So yes, yeah. Uh, while the children are children, right? At 18, they're no longer children. They are adults, they're young adults. But while the children are children, you don't come before baby mama. Those kids come before you. And that means baby mama comes before you. You need to understand this. For him, it is work because work has to pay the bills. Work has to put food in people's mouths. Work definitely comes before you. Your work comes before him, does it not? Same thing for him. So work comes first and then the kids, how, however number of kids there are, and then baby mama and then you. Do you believe high value men don't cheat but exercise options? I don't even know what the hell that means. If you're in a committed relationship and you go out, then you are cheating. That's all that means, period. But anybody who calls themselves a high value man, run, run. Uh, when you use that no kissing for three months dating rule and you say, oh God, a high value man would never wait that long, say goodbye. Okay, goodbye. I see you. Thank you. Thank you for outing yourself. Understood. Thank you. Goodbye. Continue on, please. Um, because men who are actually high value don't go around with fucking stars on their shoulder, patting themselves on the back, going, I'm a high value man. They're much more humble than that, for one thing. And this thing about high value men practicing options, men are not looking for options. A man looking for a relationship is looking for the one. So the guy who says a high value man isn't gonna stick around for three months because he has options, 
is outing himself as a selfish short-term thinker let him go because you're not an option you are the selection and he doesn't get that because he thinks every woman is an option because he looks down on women so the guy who says that has to go don't don't keep that one around and don't believe a fucking word he says that a high value man won't stick around for three months that's absolute bullshit hard-working men with character and integrity are looking for a hard-working woman with character and integrity because like attracts like and hard-working men good men practice impulse control they understand the concept of sacrificing one marshmallow today for two marshmallows tomorrow you're literally speaking their language so the one who says nobody would wait three months for first kiss he's speaking the language of the selfish short-term thinker he's outing himself Is it okay to call people baby when in a relationship? When in a relationship, sure, but not before. Uh, what if he's lied to me several times in the past two years? He says, I'm living in the past. That sounds like a coaching session, Lovely. I can't help you navigate your circumstances unless I do a deep enough dive. Boyfriend hates college and wants to drop out, but I just graduated and I need stability. What's his plan? Like... I dropped out of university, but look at what I'm doing. I wrote nine books. I've got a a business where, you know, I help people. I, I sell books and I do coaching every single month. I'm, I'm making an income. So he can drop out. That's no problem. Um, but what are you going to do? Where's the income going to come from? <clears throat> Oh yeah, I can hear the thunder. Maggie's all, Maggie's all anxious. I usually come with so many relationship questions, but I've run out. Thank you, you're so cute. You're so cute. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Is being in love good? I have such a euphoric feeling that the person becomes addictive. Uh, there's like these bodies are designed to feel and have so much pleasure emotionally so there's nothing wrong with being in love I love how much I love my husband uh, why should he wait when she already has kids Wow is that ever sexist is that ever sexist say something else that's super sexist so I can just go ahead and block you how do you know if you have OCD anxiety in your relationship or if you're simply not with the right one? Uh, if you want to clarify that, you can come get a coaching session. Oh, oh, here we go. High value man has multiple options. What's wrong with that? Go get your options. Go have options. That's a selfish short term thinker. That's oh, no. you. Oh, well, well, they didn't like you, so might as well. Might as well. But yeah, no, it's just anybody who's like, I have options, that's that's what you're out looking for, right? So they're outing them, themselves as selfish short-term thinkers, I have options. I'm not looking for the one, I've, all I see is options. It's all options for me. How do I initiate the conversation being exclusive since I already messed up with the no kissing rule? So you just have it now. Hey, I just want to let you know I'm done my playtime. I'm looking for a committed long-term relationship because I want to get married, have a kid one day. What about you? And if he says, no, that's not what I'm looking for, say goodbye because that's, that's not the one you want to be with. He's not in this for the same thing you are. He doesn't want the same things you are. So um, you you have to say goodbye. If I spend money with my significant other and I are on a good terms, is that impulse? Yep. Yep, it's called retail therapy. How do I set a new standard if I'm already dating somebody? What's the uh, what's the new standard? Who wants a notification when I go live? Say I do. I'm in my 40s and have no idea how to start dating after three years single. Uh, grab no more assholes. Knowledge is power. This will help you understand 
how to get back into dating in a very functional way that is basically heart insurance. Um, keeps you from giving your heart to somebody before you know who they are. How long should you date somebody before moving in together? Uh, you want to date a year before moving in together so that you have a good idea of who they are. How can you tell the difference between boundaries and trying to control your significant other? Ask yourself, would I say this to a friend? Would I say this to a friend? So if if not, then that's you're you're not about to have a peer peer conversation. You're about to have a parent child conversation. What's your favorite thing about your husband? And what's his favorite thing about you? Um. So my favorite thing about my husband is um. I want to say everything, because he really is a phenomenal human being. Um, I would say his sense of humor, intelligence, physical affection are like very tops for me. Um, his favorite thing about me is that, you know, I help us have an easy relationship. So I am the emotional leader in the household. I did bring a lot of tools that calmed myself and then brought our relationship to a much more functional and happy place. So he would say his favorite thing about me is how easy it is to be with me. Da, da, da. La, 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 la. Guys, um, do make sure you go on Instagram, on my Instagram page and go follow me there because I do a coaching giveaway every single month and um, the next one is coming up soon. Just on breaking up with boyfriend, use a breakup sandwich. This is why you're great. This is why it's not working. This is why you'll be great for someone else. Have you ever been cheated on and how did you deal with it? Uh, I broke up with him. I broke up with him. So yeah, yeah. Uh, how you should approach romantic relationships the same as friendships the way you talk to your partner should not be any different than how you would talk to a friend so if you're gonna so there was a girl on my live yesterday she's like uh my boyfriend went out with his friends all night i didn't hear from him until two o'clock the next day um how do i tell him to not do that and i said would you say that to your friends if your friends without went out without you um, would you say, hey, you have to text me periodically so that I know you're still alive? And that was her reasoning, right? I'm like, I'm like, why does he need to, to keep in touch with you when he's out? She's like, well, I, I, you know, I worry that he's still alive. And I'm like, do you do that with your friends? If your friends go out without you, do they need to touch base with you periodically so that you know that they're still alive? Or is that situational? Are you only doing this with your boyfriend? Um... It, because, you know, if you're saying your boyfriend, when you go out with your friends, you have to keep texting me so I know you're still alive, you're treating them like a child. You are, you are very, basically parenting them. How do you deal with being jealous of other women, being around your boyfriend without a real reason? Come take my No More Insecurity program. Uh, because you're basically asking, how do I change how I think so I can change my emotions, so I can change the behaviors I feel compelled to do. That's a process, not a quickie answer. Um, so if you want to do the process, I do have a No More Insecurity program to help you get through this deprogramming of the overthinking, the jealousy, the insecurity, the fears that you have. <coughs> What's dating 101 about? Okay, so somebody's asking about dating 101 and comeback queen. Do you guys want to book walk through a quick description of what each of my books are about? Who wants a book walk through? Yes. Yes, Chantal. It's way too hot in Calgary. I hear you guys are baking. My fiance thinks his outside chores are more important than helping me with inside chores. Okay, then trade. 
Uh, what do you think about significant others going to strip clubs? Totally fine as long as they're not regulars uh, and getting lap dances. Okay, my loves, let's do a book walk through. So uh, Comeback Queen is the book that's gonna help you get over a breakup. Some of you guys are asking how you can uh, get over the pain that you're experiencing since your last relationship. This is the book that's gonna help you do that. Um, then you're going to get No More Assholes. This is the book that is going to help you make sure your next relationship is the right one by helping you ensure you get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker, not a selfish short-term thinker, somebody who loves you, wants to take care of you for the long-term, really re lean into a relationship. No more bouncing in and out of relationships, you guys. Make sure the next one is the right one. Uh, then you're going to get, oh, by the way, men, this is your version here, The Perfect Play. This is going to help you get in a relationship with a woman. No more girls, no more selfish short-term thinkers, no more takers, no more users. Uh, then, my ladies, you're going to get after the first kiss. This is going to help you transition from the courtship phase to the reality phase. You're not going to have such a strong insecurity phase because you're going to understand the changes that take place. I teach you how to deal with baby mama. I teach you how to deal with him going back to work, doing that extra overtime, the things that, you know, kind of separate you physically now because you go back to being efficient with your lives. <coughs> uh, fix that shit is going to help you have zero fighting in your relationship. Yes, that is possible. Yes, it is amazing. Hubby and I fought for 10 years. We haven't had a single fight in five years. This is how I do it. You will understand how to calm your emotions, how to make sure you don't vomit behaviors into the relationship that are destructive and create distance. You will understand how to bring up those sensitive things that typically create fights. You're going to know how to talk about those in such a way that there is no fighting, there is no defensiveness. So a lot of understanding in this book, a lot of extremely helpful tools on how to have a close relationship. If you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you, this book is the bomb. Ooh, the thunder. Uh, this book, by the way, goes really well with custom made. If you're codependent, if you're making your partner your purpose, if you're leaning too much on them for emotional everything, you need this one to relationship properly and this one to know what your, your um, purpose is so you stop making your partner your purpose. And then I also teach you how to monetize your purpose so that not only do you turn your purpose into your hobby, you turn it into a hobby that makes you money. Dating 101, I understand the drives, behaviors, and emotions behind love. This is a textbook. I did write this to get into high school, so there is no swearing. Uh, moms and dads, you can get this for your teenagers. And fake love you not apply, how to avoid posers, losers, scammers, and predators. This is a free ebook in the link tree in my bio if you hit that free book button. Um, and then uh, say yes to goodness, the 10 steps to a complete and happy you. This goes beyond relationships into your everyday life, teaching you how to have the perspective you need to navigate all the stuff you need to be thinking about because it affects you. Say yes to goodness. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say I do. My boyfriend has a girl who's a friend who's sending him flirty messages. What do I do? Say, I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who entertains, uh, who entertains girls. I don't, I don't, like, how is he responding to that? He's entertaining it, is he not? So, my loves, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up, and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say, I just did. <clears throat> he isn't answering her well that's good on his part okay that is good on his part uh he does need to have a talk with her and set a boundary and say i don't think you'd like that if your boyfriend's friend was sending him these type of messages pretty sure my girlfriend is gonna like that you're doing that 
you really should think twice about doing the kind of things that you know you're not going to like having done to you. I just did. Look at all my just dids. Can we see the dog? Can I pet that dog? So it's it's kind of hard because my camera, my, my thing is up on a tripod. So here's Maggie panting beside me because she's all anxious because there's thunder. And then there's Mr. Choo Choo Charlie. Chill as a bean. Charlie. Oh, he's so chill. Charlie don't care. Charlie doesn't care. Charlie's fine. Charlie's always fine. Just found out one week after a breakup, he was already talking to six women. I, I don't know, love. Oh, Maggie and Ch -ch Charlie. I am not vegan. Uh, but, uh... I get I get grass fed beef. So you have five five good years, one bad day. Do your dog sleep on your bed with you? Um, I know Maggie doesn't because she's so big and she does she can't even get up on the bed. Uh, Charlie does. Personal question: Do you ever struggle with anything? Um, does it ever stop? Uh, it it doesn't stop, right? You just get better, like you surf, right? You don't get sucked under you surf on top we are emotional beings we are designed to be emotional you're gonna have good emotions you're gonna have bad emotions you're gonna have good days you're gonna have bad days there's a lot that can affect that not sleeping well enough um your hormones right life all these things can bring you up and down but what you can do is learn the tools to surf those ups and downs not get tumbled under the waves and that's the kind of stuff that I teach you guys. I don't tell you you're going to come to a place where you're happy every single minute of every single day, but I'm gonna give you the tools to understand how to stay on top of your emotions and not let them drag you down. Oh, I love the book so far, I love that. Love that. Uh, how do you help a man who's having a really bad day is kind of on edge and losing it? Um, you stay out of his way, honestly. Um, when my husband is in a state because there's too much anxiety and he's he's trying his best to not get vomity i don't you know i stay quiet i stay quiet um i don't impose on him i let him go through his emotions and his thoughts and bring himself to a better place Come back queen and no more assholes will arrive tomorrow that's so awesome so awesome guys just so you know i do have a what book is right for me quiz in the link tree in my bio been doing a guided sleep meditation for sleeping and it's getting me to sleep in no time love that love that best recommendation for meditation for a beginner um go to my bio click on the link tree there's a button there that says free meditation guide there is a starter track on there you can also go to my youtube channel go to my let's meditate playlist track number two once or twice a day with headphones like really twice a day is ideal right getting in 20 minutes a day is really super ideal um but you can start with 10 minutes and work your way up to doing it twice a day but listen to it with headphones listen to it with headphones because it's binaural beat that means music that's infused with the frequency which is one frequency in one ear and one in the other ear combining inside your head to create a third frequency. Ugh, what do you do with someone who's scared of love and anything about it but still talks to you? Put the wounded bird back on the sidewalk. That's what you do with that. Don't create some kind of romantic notion that you can Fix this wounded bird. Oh, I'm going to teach him how to love again. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He's telling you I have red flag painted over my entire body. And if you play willful ignorance to this, you will make yourself miserable. You are not a therapist. You are not a vet. Put the wounded bird back on the sidewalk and go find somebody who is not a walking red flag. No more walking red flags. No more. 
No more. No more not listening to what they say and creating stories in our head. Um, no more, my love. Don't do that. You're welcome, lovely. Get no more assholes. No more of this. No more of this. Sooner or later, their wounds will be your fault, right? Uh, how to fully accept your partner. Uh, if you're having trouble, you can book a coaching session. Um, I don't know who you're with, so I don't know if you should be fully accepting your partner. Uh, you should be getting somebody who passes the 12 character traits and no more assholes um, and accepting the rest about them because they're awesome and the rest is acceptable. When do I know it's the time to say I love you? Anytime after six months. If you need help getting better at talking about positive things, come get coaching sessions. You're welcome. Twelve eighteen. It looked like we both wanted the same things. He even proposed to me, but we haven't done it. <clears throat> A boyfriend of a year started being super sweet to me after we've been fighting. Should I be worried? I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't know what's going on. What if he says I love you before six months and I know it's not love yet? Um... You can tell him how you feel. I remember with my husband, I used to say, you know, I'm very fond of you. <laughs> so if you're fond of him, you can say that. Do you do coaching for people all over the world? I'm located in the US. Yes, I do. Um, all of my coaching sessions are on video, so they're all on Zoom. So it doesn't matter where in the world you are, as long as you have a good internet connection, we're good to go. Uh, so anybody who's interested in getting a coaching session, go to my bio, click on the link tree, click on that coaching button. It's going to take you to a page. Make sure you read that carefully. If you do want to get a coaching session, follow the instructions and you can book yourself in for a session. A lot of guys have told me they love me after a month. Use the no kissing for three months dating rule. What should I look for as a teen? I think you should look for education and then get out there. So I really think you should read Dating 101. Um, if you want to back that up with a vetting process, then you can read No More Assholes. <clears throat> boyfriend says he loves me but breaks up with me constantly he's receiving therapy any thoughts i suggest you get fixed that shit start doing what's in that book if you want a healthy conflict-free relationship you do need to do your part as well in order to achieve that guys i'm gonna grab a glass of water i'll be right back
Set. Hello, we are back. Hello, we are back. Who else is in their jammas? Yeah, I'm fancy on top, but I'm uncomfy on the bottom. Who else is wearing jammas? Do you believe you can work on yourself and grow while still being in a relationship? 100% yes, I do believe that. 100% absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm in bed, so yes, gem gems. Gem gems for me. We like the cozy, we like the comfy, we like the cozy, we like the jammas. I'm new to your page. Could you do a quick sum of what's in each book? Except no more assholes, I'm getting it. That's so cute. I can do that. Uh, what do you do when your partner's negatives are the main things on your mind? Uh, come get a coaching session if you need some clarity in your relationship. How do you deal with the, yes, Jam Jam crew in the house. How do you deal with the silent treatment? You eliminate the source, which is the conflict. So um, get fix that shit. If you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you and you do what's in that book, you will remove the conflict in your relationship. <gasps> Hello from New Zealand. Guys, we're gonna do a book walkthrough. Who wants a book walkthrough? New Zealand, love it. <clears throat> okay, so Comeback Queen is going to help you get over breakup and put your heart back together and get that emotional healing that you need. I answer all the whys, all the whys, you guys. Um, and then we have the vetting process. I got two books here. I got one for men, one for women. So how to make sure you pick a generous long-term thinker. No more selfish short-term thinkers. How to make sure the next one you choose is compatible with you, shares your goals, shares your desires, shares your timelines. Uh, so no more assholes for women. The perfect play for men is going to help you make sure the next relationship is the right one for you. Then ladies, you're gonna grab after the first kiss once you find that generous long-term thinker. You want to transition from courtship phase to reality phase without going into an insecurity phase. This is the book that helps you achieve that. Then you're gonna get fix that shit. If, you're the, if there's any conflict in your relationship or you wanna make sure there's no conflict in your relationship, this is the book that gets you to zero fights with your partner if you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. Very important. <clears throat> and then you get custom made if you're being codependent. So fix that shit to help you make sure you understand how to relationship properly. By the way, this is an audiobook. You can grab it in the link tree in my bio. Um, and you can get all my books on Amazon in paperback or ebook. You can get them elsewhere too, but I get a little bit more if you get them off Amazon. So custom made answers two questions. What is my purpose and how can I monetize it? So you actually get paid doing what you love. Then we got Fake Love Need Not Apply, How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. Uh, you can get this for free in an ebook if you hit the free book button in the link tree in my bio. Dating 101 is a textbook. How to understand the behavior, stars, and emotions behind love. It's all in here. Um, parents, get this for your teenagers, please. I didn't swear in this book, so it's safe. Say Yes to Goodness, 10 Steps to a Complete and Happy You. This is the book that helps you understand how to be happy inside and outside your relationships. If you're wondering where to start, there is a What Book is Right For Me quiz in the link tree in my bio. Um, it lists all my books in there. Guys, some people have this whole collection. Can you believe that? And I'm writing another one, by the way. I'm writing Fix That Shit for Men, which is coming out in August. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I want you guys to go check out this uh, website. I just created a new website. You need to see this. Um, I am launching a 12 week membership program. It is body, mind and spirit. Um, it's all about making sure your entire physical being is running in an optimal way. Um, I've got professionals coming in. They're going to teach us uh, how to move. They're going to teach us what to eat. Um, you can watch the live versions or you can watch the replays. It's up to you. You can watch them both. Uh, so if you go to my bio and you click on the link tree and you click on that 12 week lifestyle membership, uh, you can add yourself to the mailing list to get uh, the ability to get in on this at a half price. Uh, there's going to be an early bird window. There's going to be a discount. Um, and so for 24 hours, you're going to be able to... Um, sorry. Uh, for, 20, for 24 hours, you will be able to get half off on the membership. So if you hit that button, uh, it's going to take you to the new website, the new web page that I made today. It's still not finished. I still need to add the courses that you're going to get your big discount on that are coming up. But yeah, we get the countdown. You can add yourself to the mailing list so that you can get that half off discount. Um, I got some details in here, what, what you can expect, um, what's going to be included in your membership, but I still need to add what the classes are going to be during that time. Uh-oh. How's the video, you guys? I'm wondering if it froze up. Uh, can I talk about the insecurity phase? So... Insecurity is something that happens when you have a fear of loss. So when you realize how emotionally invested you are in somebody, you tend to go into a fearful state, which is an insecurity phase, because now you realize that if you lose that person, it's going to hurt. And we don't like pain. We are creatures designed to seek pleasure and avoid pain. So when you realize it's going to hurt if this doesn't work, then we do this. <gasps> And we sphincter clench and we try to grab on extra tight. And that is the insecurity phase. Oh, sorry. Oops. Uh, I need to plug in. There we go. I've got cords all over the place. I'm going to fix that for you guys. Don't worry. Oh, we are human. That's not bad. I know. <laughs> you guys got up close and personal. Uh, who wants a notification when I go live? Who wants in on this fun? Did it freeze up at all? Did the video freeze up at all? Like, just because I went on the internet on my other phone? Did that happen? Oof. Who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. Okay, good, good, good. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, my loves. I do. Okay, my I do's. Uh, click my picture here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say I just did. Oh, I already do have notifications. That's awesome. Uh, do you know why guys want to break up when, they, when they're feeling lost and want to work on themselves? Because they don't want to disappoint us. Um, they don't want to disappoint us. Hello, Charlie. Look at you. Hello, my sweetie pie. Hello, my sweetie. 
I know my sweetie, he's so cute. You wanna come see mama? Hello. Oh, this my big boy, come here, yes. Oh, yes, hi. Hi, he's a big boy. Yeah, you wanna come see mama? Hello. Wanna say hello? What about sharing parenting responsibilities? How come I need to ask for every little bit of care? Um, because that's the partner you chose. You, di you didn't choose yourself somebody who steps up with pride and effort to their responsibilities. And then you made a baby. You made a baby with that person who doesn't step up with pride and effort to their responsibilities. And now you're like, how come they don't step up? Uh, getting back from a second date, she walked after I shared three month no kissing. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. That's my doggo. <clears throat> da, 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 da. Da, da, da. What about if he wanted to, he would? Is that a thing? I think we over-romanticize that, right? And we, we tell ourselves, if we wanted to get me flowers, he would. If he wanted to buy me jewelry, he would. It's not that. Um, you know, uh, if he wanted to spend more time with me, he would. So are you not taking into account that he's taking up overtime so that he can buy a home? Are you not taking into account that he... You know, every time he takes your gas, your car out, he fills it up with gas. Every time you go out for dinner, he pays for it. Um, and that he fixed these things around your house. So this, if he wanted to, he would, is often wrapped around a willful ignorance of how somebody is actually showing effort by creating this Disney story. If he wanted to be a Disney prince, he would. It, we need to be more realistic than that. <coughs> So guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna head out because I gotta make some salsa guacamole for my husband. Um, so uh, if you want to figure out my love, uh, you know this partner who isn't stepping up and doing their part, and you don't feel like you're asking for too much, but he just feels like it's in imposition. Um, if you want some help with that, then. Uh, come get a coaching session so that I can get the necessary details to help you understand what you should be doing in this situation. I just can't do a coaching session on a live. So anybody who wants to get a coaching session to clarify how they should be proceeding with what's happening, um, whatever that's they're feeling is a, a burden or confusing, um, go to my bio, click on the link tree, click on that coaching button. You can check it out and um, see if this is right for you. I do have links to my podcast and my YouTube channel in the link to my bio. You can go get my books on Amazon. If you want an audiobook, Fix That Shit is now available in the link tree in my bio. Uh, there's lots of free stuff in the link tree in my bio. I also am doing a coaching giveaway on Instagram, so make sure you go follow me there and go watch for that giveaway box. It's gonna be coming up soon. I love you. I will see you soon. I'll be back soon. Um, I'll be back soon. Make sure you click this once or twice to get the pop-up in the pop-up is a bell. Do that before I go and say I just did. That way you can get a notification next time I come live, which is gonna be sometime tomorrow. How do I handle a difficult situation with my sister-in-law, my boyfriend and I? Uh, my boyfriend and I don't see eye to eye. Oh, about how to handle her? Um, I don't know what it is. So if you want to understand how to deal with that, then do come get a coaching session. If he wanted to create comparisons and insecurities, yes, it, it really, it really does. Um, there's a lot of unrealistic expectations, um, in relationships and it's creating a lot of unnecessary anxieties and fights. So I really do want to get rid of all the unnecessary fights 
um, get the rest of it down to discussions and not fights and that way you have a conflict-free relationship that is filled with resolution which feels really super amazing i love you i will see you soon make sure you have an awesome night and get some awesome sleep bye my loves mm -hmm.